Hello everybody. Okay, this is the last piece of test equipment that we'll uh, deal with before we before I start the build. Um, this combines the one tube the oscillator from the last video and it adds one more tube, an amplifier tube, to where I can hook a coil in the output of that tube and then tune it to check a coil uh, to bring it to resonance. It also, because we got an oscillator here and again it's running at the middle of the 40 meter band, 7.2 megahertz, um, it is also a signal source. So if you built this one, you have a way of uh, aligning your receiver once it's built and to pre-tune the uh, input coils, the antenna uh, and the RF amp output plate coil on the, the receive uh, preamp. Um, also, this device here adds one more unique feature. It gives you a tube tester. It actually can test a tube in operation to see if in comparing two tubes you can see if one has more gain than the other one. Now I'll show you that here in just in a second. Um, the circuit that this meter is hooked to I described it uh, maybe one more video back. Um, it's a little RF probe sampling the plate circuit of this tube and it makes a DC voltage that I can read on the voltmeter. So now let me check the radio here and make sure that we're still on 7.2 Pretty close. Okay, good enough. All right, now I'll show you how this tube tester works. This is the oscillator, and this is the amplifier. So what I'm going to do is just pull this tube out, and I will put another one in. And we'll watch and see what voltage we get on the meter. Remember now this is rectified voltage sampling RF that the tube is creating or amplifying. Okay, it's warming up. Okay, it's settled down at 1.31, it's trying to go 1.32 volts. Okay, we'll pull that out, and we'll try another one. Show you how this works. And let it warm up. So now if you had several tubes and you didn't have a tube checker, you could put them in this circuit and then figure out which ones you wanted to use. Uh, you could sort out the weaker ones from the really good hot ones. Now this is one of the weaker tubes, see? <clears throat> We're only coming up with 0.66 volts. So you can see that tube has a lower output. It has less gain. And at least this way, the tube is actually amplifying when you're measuring the output of it. Uh, unlike a normal tube tester, 
they don't put the circuit in an operating condition to where they're amplifying they just run a given amount of current in the bias and the screen and plate and they measure for current flowing through the tube this actually measures the gain or the amplitude of the signal that the tube amplifies so if the tube has more gain it's therefore going to have a higher peak voltage output on the plate. Now I'll put my the one hot one that I had back in. Nope, might have got them mixed up. This one doesn't have as much gain as the, I think the one I had originally in there. There we go. Maybe this is it. That's more like it. That's coming up there a little more. Anyhow, like so. Um, again, the oscillator tube is running as a Hartley oscillator circuit on it with a tapped coil that the cathode's hooked to. And now I'll show you that, the underside of the board. This is the schematic for this unit. See on the last video, this is what we were dealing with, was just this tube and its associated parts for the Hartley oscillator circuit. And again on this one, I used an RF choke in the tank circuit, so it's untuned it just creates a signal and then feeds a sample into the grid of the stage following so this tube is actually amplifying now this trimmer here this is the frequency and this one is this trimmer here across this coil okay show you what parts we got here this is the tapped coil for the Hartley oscillator but right here here is the uh, RF choke it's 250 micro Henry RF choke for that one and then that sample goes across over into the grid of the following stage the uh, tank coil for this tube is right here, L2. Has no core, even though my schematic shows a core, but uh, we're trying these uh, just pieces of soda straw, and they're, they're working pretty good as a coil form. Real simple, cheap, uh, you can get them anywhere. Okay, and this is that little RF sampler. 
that I keep talking about this little cap right here we can see it in the photo in the camera right here this little disc capacitor right here that's a 10 picofarad cap and it feeds the center of these two diodes back to back one of them goes to ground provides negative to ground and then the positive end forward ends up on one side of this cap there's a little capacitor across it that helps filter it and then my voltmeter is right here is where I attach it and then of course the other the black lead I just hooked the chassis ground so right across there simple um, it will provide a signal source um, so you can you tune this by using a shortwave radio or something a ham radio and you can listen to the output dial it to 7.2 then if you leave that frequency adjustment alone then you can go and adjust the coil the output and the coil here will this coil can be tuned uh, and you can t check it for the first two coils we'll, we'll get to that in the receiver um, there's one that comes off the antenna and the same coil is in the plate so you would end up making two of these coils and you can check them on this little circuit and again you just use a voltmeter to uh, check that they resonate or peak at the same place if you have a cap checker you would then simply unsolder the one wire without bothering the cap just unsolder the wire off the capacitor and then put your cap checker from ground to this post here and measure what that value is and at that point you could take several capacitors combine them together until you come up with the total that equals what whatever the value that you read here with your cap checker and then you could solder that right across the coil and leave it that would be close enough to get you from one end of the 40 meter band from the low end to the top end by tuning it right in the middle it's like if you only had one of these tuners um, you could use it there and then like I say just you'd fix tune I have them here just as to test in and I think I have a uh, I think I've got a 68 across and then I've got this here will end up measuring uh, about 20 22 picofarad on that capacitor okay and I have this schematic ready to send if anybody wants it if you want to try to build this shoot me an email and uh, I'll send you that back okay um, should be in about a week uh, I should be able to start on the uh, build for the receiver like I say this will be the last piece of test equipment I'll quit dilly-dallying around and I'll we'll get on to building the receiver but this kind of gives people a chance to try some stuff ahead of time test your skills build a circuit get it working and when you if you do it will help you when you sit down to finally build the receiver you'll have a little bit of experience under your under your belt okay thank you and uh, we'll I guess see you in the next video and we'll start building the shortwave receiver thank you take care bye now